Okay, today's topic is rearranging equations. Now in this situation, you don't have many numbers in your equations at all, but you are looking for a specific variable. And in this case, we're looking at the variable x. So similar to any time we've tried to solve for x, we take any term that doesn't have an x in it onto the other side. And uh, since it's crossed the border, it will become a minus c over there. Okay. Now you cannot subtract apples and carrots, you can, you, so you just keep it like that as a minus c. We follow the same sort of steps as before. If we would like to get b by itself, I mean x by itself, it's being multiplied by b, so the opposite of multiplying by b is dividing by b. But whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So I've decided both sides by b. These b's then cancel, and you have x all by itself. So you've solved the equation for the variable x. Put a nice box around your answer. Okay. Now, if they happen to have the letter X in twice, like, let's pretend it still had A there, and it had BX plus 3 times X uh, plus C. You almost always do exactly the same sort of thing. Any term that has an X on it, you bring it to one side. Any term without an X, you bring it to the other. I'll put the answers in orange here. Now the trick here is how do you get the X from it, which appears twice, how do you get it so it only appears once? Okay, and the magic is factoring. You say that X goes into the right hand side two times and it's been multiplied by both B and 3. Okay. Now, if you notice, we only have the letter X appearing once. Okay, so the magic is to uh, take whatever is multiplied by the X and divide both sides by it. So I'll divide this time, I'm going to divide both sides by B plus 3. That B plus 3 gets cancelled by this B plus 3. And again, we're left with the letter X all by itself. Nice box around your answer. Okay, so the trick is if the letter X appears more than once, then factor it out, and then whatever's in the bracket, divide both sides by that bracket. Okay? Okay. In this case, we're going to be solving for the letter y, the variable y. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the 3x to the other side because it doesn't have the letter y in it. So it'll be still 5y here, minus 3x over there, plus 15. Now we'd like to get y by itself, so we're going to divide by 5. Now in this case, we're going to divide all three terms by 5. Okay, and uh, so we end up with y solved by itself. We get a minus 3 over 5x, which I'll write like that, and a 15 divided by 5 is a plus 3. Okay. So now we have solved for the variable y. Now you have to watch out for a little mistake here that crops up quite often with students. Let's give you this question. Again, I'd like to solve for the letter y. I'll put that in an orange here. Take 7 x to the other side. Okay, so it'll be minus 7 x plus 14 over there. But what's going to be left on the left-hand side will be minus 
2y. Don't forget that negative sign. Minus 2y. Okay. Now what I have to do is divide everything by whatever is in front of the variable y. So that's negative 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. And this leaves me with y on the left hand side just as we wanted. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. And a positive divided by a negative is a negative. Okay, so that's solving for the variable y. Um, and you'll have to do this a lot when you're involved with the graphing section. Okay, okay in this example, um, we're going to try solving for the letter a. As before, any term that doesn't have the letter a in, we'll take it to the other side of the equation. So we'll have 5a squared here, and 8 minus b there. I'd like to get rid of the 5. It's been multiplied. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. Now I can divide everything by 5 like that, or I could divide each term by 5. In any case, the 5's here cancel, and I'm left with just a squared. And on the right-hand side, 8 minus b all over 5. But I don't want to solve for a squared. I'd like to solve for the letter a. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. So I take the square root of this side and get a, and I take the square root of that side, and there is my answer. And I should remember that there's both a positive and a negative square root. Okay. So that's an example of, of doing something with a squared sign in it. If you have the same equation, but say the square root of a, then it's done the same way. b to the other side, divide both sides by 5, and that gets rid of that. And you have the square root of a is 8 minus b over 5. Okay, but I don't want the square root of a, I like the letter a. So the opposite of square rooting is squaring. So whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So that then is my answer. And you can leave it like this. 8 minus b squared all over 5, or square the 5 on the bottom, like that. Um, there's a number of different ways you could leave that answer. So either one would be correct.